All right, kids, Columbus native, writer, and poet Hanif Abdurraqib once said, if you are from here and still love it like I do, everything done is in defense of the city's existence. He was, of course, talking about Columbus, the city that you and I love. Now, it's one thing to see the city through the perception of someone who is from here, like Hanif, you and I, although you're from the suburbs. But the perspective of those who aren't from here is important. To them, Columbus may be Cowtown or biggest small town in America, or a glorified overarching fanatical college city. With that said, in college is when I started defending Columbus while explaining that the city is blacker than most of the other big cities, Columbus is younger than other big cities, and later I could call Columbus a big city because it's actually bigger than San Francisco. And all people would say in return is, <laughs> gay! But not in a good way. But they knew something about Columbus that I didn't even realize until I visited other cities in Ohio and around the country. Columbus is really gay, and they're right. For instance, in 2010, the Gay Lesbian Index listed Columbus as one of the top 20 gayest cities in America, plus a 2015 Gallup poll put Columbus in the top 15 of the nation's 50 largest gay populations, and Columbus regularly receives a perfect score on the Human Rights Campaign Foundation's Municipal Equality Index for its policies regarding the LGBTQ community. So today we're going to talk about why that is. Why am I much more likely to see rainbow flags and same-sex couples in Columbus versus virtually everywhere else? Well, it may have started in 1974 when Columbus City Council adopted a new rule which protected against discrimination in housing and public accommodations based on sexual orientation. In 1981, 200 people marched from the Ohio State University to the State House in celebration of the Stonewall riots from 1969 in New York. Then, in September of 1981, when leaders of the Moral Majority, a right-wing Christian political organization, tried to establish its headquarters in Columbus, different liberal groups protested with a march around the State House. At that time, there was no LGBT organization in the city and a small group of men and women joined the other protesters to represent the queer cause. Later, those activists met at one member's house. It was there, with a handful or three of people, where Stonewall Union was born. Recruitment for what we now know as Stonewall Columbus was held in gay and lesbian bars, which didn't have any windows for fear of hate crimes. Yet, the efforts of Stonewall Columbus caught wind of the human rights campaign out of Washington, D.C., then the Human Rights Campaign Fund. Fundraising events went without publicity. People donated with cash instead of checks because checks are traceable. The queer community was proud, but not necessarily out. And if they were, it wasn't talked about. So, 1982 brought the first official gay pride parade with 825 marchers. They knew because they counted. In the early years, they may have been more protesters than participants. And a few of them wore brown bags over their heads in order to conceal their identities all the while trying to evade food and other objects being thrown at them. In 1984, the Pride Parade, known as the Ohio, Michigan, Lesbian, and Gay Pride Parade, reportedly drew 4,000 people. That same year, an ordinance was brought to City Hall, and it was similar to the one I mentioned from 1974, but this one would bar employers from discriminating based on sexual orientation. I'm going to show you testimony from an opponent yeah, of this there. bill. We're going to see what he has to say about it. And I have told you what it says, and in my opinion, and God's opinion, as I stand before you today, homosexuality is an unclean practice, as the Father God has said it, plain and simple. And they should not be forced to be hired in, to be around our children, to spread diseases that have no cure. Them. You keep them outside. You quarantine smallpox and herpes, AIDS, and these various diseases that have stemmed out of the homosexual community should not be forced to be placed among God's clean people. So what do y'all think? That, that's just lies. Why? That's just lies? Why? What was he lying about? Oh, it's that God Every single thing? said that. What do you what do you think? Why? 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 Okay. How how would it be good if someone treated them like that? Yeah. Well, you got to keep in mind this was a year after your dad was born. Okay? Mm -hmm. Wasn't that long ago. That was a preacher. Another preacher will go on to say 
I can't believe that the great city of Columbus is considering the passage of a bill of this nature. I believe if we pass it, it'll give Columbus a bad name. Homosexuals from surrounding states will flock here. They'll realize they can be protected in Columbus. He then asks, who in the world wants Columbus to be known as the gay capital of the Midwest? They describe themselves as apostles and ministers, but I would call these homophobes prophets if they weren't wrong about everything else they said. That law passed with a vote of five to two, by the way. It's here that I want to pause and say that the advancements being made for the LGBT community in Columbus and Franklin County weren't reflected in other cities in Ohio, let alone the state of Ohio itself. Word spreads about what is capable here in Columbus, and people from all over the state relocated to Central Ohio. Also, asking why Columbus is so gay is essentially asking the same of the Short North. Well, it was seen that the Arts District lends itself to progressiveness, a visible LGBT community open to new ideas, ways of thinking, and different kinds of people, which breeds diversity. This is reflected in businesses and their surrounding neighborhoods, along with democratic political leanings, good nightlife and social scene, and a major university. All of these things are kind of how someone could describe Columbus overall. Why is Columbus so gay? People who support places like Short North and policies, which brought it from awareness to acceptance and allyship, and hopefully moving forward to liberation. Back to the Pride Parade. In 1999, two anti-LGBT protesters cut down a pride parade flag from the state house and burned it. They were arrested and charged. Two years later, one of the protesters came back to the parade and burned another rainbow flag. He also poured gasoline on the parade's head of security. Now a highlight for the Columbus Pride Parade came in 2015 when the Grand Marshal was Jim Oberfeld from Cincinnati, who was the lead plaintiff in the U.S. Supreme Court case that recognized a right for same-sex marriage. With Oberfeld versus Hodges, he, along with his husband, John Arthur, sued the state before Arthur died in 2013 of Lou Gehrig's disease. These two men had been legally married in Maryland and wanted Oberfeld designated as a spouse on Arthur's death certificate. The case eventually went all the way to the Supreme Court, where they won. In 2017, a group calling themselves the Black Pride Four blocked the parade route to try and give more voice to queer people of color, calling out Stonewall's failure at recognizing the trans community as well. This led to immediate changes to Stonewall Columbus and the Pride Parade personnel. The following year, in order to accommodate these marginalized communities, an alternate event from Columbus Pride was held by Black, Queer, and Intersectional in Bronzeville. The year 2020 saw the cancellation of the Columbus Pride Parade, but in October of that year, during LGBT History Month, Stonewall Columbus introduced Pride Stride in order to bring about fitness and education. Which brings us to today. This year's Pride will mostly be virtual, while in New York, there is debate about whether to allow queer police officers to attend in uniform. Look, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that all of this is due to Marsha P. Johnson, aka Malcolm, and Sylvia Rivera. Let us not forget that America's gay liberation movement began June 28, 1969, in Manhattan's Greenwich Village at a gay bar called the Stonewall Inn. Pride started as a revolt against the police when they raided that bar, again. An estimated 500 to 600 people rioted and took the streets. That revolution led to the first gay rights organizations in New York City, and the movement slowly spread across the country. It arrived in Columbus in 1981. Columbus is by no means perfect, but it's far ahead of other cities in Ohio and a model for cities around the country. There are currently policies, laws, and bills on the table right now that could help or hurt the LGBT community. Columbus Pride is more than a parade. It is the largest fundraiser of the year for Stonewall Columbus, the nonprofit that provides a local LGBT community with counseling, HIV testing, clubs, and more. Pride took a lot of strides from where it began 40 years ago to now being one of the biggest celebrations in the Midwest, rivaling Chicago. Speaking of, if there was one thing that ever bothered me about Columbus, is that it never had an identity, like say, a Chicago. You know, city with the big shoulders. So when others used to tell me about Columbus being gay, I resented it. I didn't want the city that I love being primarily known for that. Add that to misguided religious, spiritual, and biblical notions that I held through misinterpretations about a faith that I still adhere to, I was intolerant. This video isn't nearly enough, and there's so much more that I could go over, but I want you to be further along than I was, and you are. I was wrong for not openly, overtly, 
supporting the LGBT community and seeking their liberation. They are a major part of what makes Columbus what it is. They are us. And we gonna be alright. Make sure to like and subscribe. Yeah, that's gonna be good stuff because we need to do more about this. Yeah, and people tell stuff that people are saying.